Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. If you're new here, hi, I'm Mia Tiffany and welcome to the Tiffany Club where we are rediscovering some of the greatest classic films throughout history. Today, we are celebrating Christmas with the film, The Shop Around the Corner. Now, before we get into it, I would like to take a second to shout out my Golden Oscar patrons. Guys, thank you so much for your support. And happy holidays. <laughs> if you are interested in becoming a patron, the link is in the description box below. The Shop Around the Corner was released in 1940, directed by Ernest Lubitsch, Lubitsch starring James Stewart and Margaret Sullivan, with other notable performances by Frank Morgan, Joseph Shieldkraut, and Sarah Hayden. Now, apologies if I said Shieldkraut wrong. Hopefully it was right. I'm sure you guys will let me know in the comments. <laughs> God bless you for that too. I just, I, I swear. Okay. <laughs> At this point, we are going to get into some historical background. For those of you who want to jump right onto the film reaction, go for it. But for those of you who want to stay, we're going to get right into it. The Shop Around the Corner was inspired by a Hungarian play called Perfumery written by Niklaus Laszlo. Ernest Lubitsch purchased the rights to the play in 1938. So Lubitsch approached many different studios to make negotiations for the film's release. However, he would end up signing with MGM under the agreement that they would own the story property and that he would be sitting in the director's chair. The Shop on the Corner was released in January of 1940 and it was an instant hit amongst the audiences. They really enjoyed this film very much. Okay, on to some interesting facts. So Lubitsch had already been eyeballing James Stewart to play the male lead. However, he had not been looking at Margaret Sullivan as his first choice for the female lead. Instead, he was looking at a European actress named Dolly Haas, but he felt that American audiences wouldn't really connect with Haas because they weren't really familiar with her at the time. So he ended up going with Margaret Sullivan. Finally, The Shop Around the Corner actually inspired a more recent film called You've Got Mail, starring Meg Ryan and Tom Hanks, which I actually haven't seen yet. So I'm going into this film really with fresh eyes. I'm very happy about that because I get to kind of experience the story itself for the first time with the original, which is always such a treat. With that being said, I'm so excited to get into this film, but before we do, y'all know the deal. If you haven't already, please subscribe to the channel and hit that bell notification to stay in the loop. All right, everyone, it is time to grab your snacks, grab your drinks, maybe some hot cocoa, and let's get in to the shop around the corner. Good morning, Mr. Pervich. Good morning. Oh, the first one, huh? Good morning, Miss Katcher. Good morning. Good morning. Oh, that's a new silver fox. It's stunning. Oh, thank you. One thing that I kind of find interesting about this movie already is the fact that it's set in Hungary, yet these actors have clearly have American accents. How was the dinner last night? Oh, yes, that's right. Mr. Kralik had dinner with the boss last night. How right? was it? Well, it was a very nice evening and I enjoyed myself. I mean, he is just an icon. Why don't we talk about him more? I don't get it. So the food was good. Now, I had a little too much goose liver last night. Wasn't it any good? Did I make any derogatory remark about the goose liver? No, 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 no. He's like, now this is what I said. Don't go and like say something else. Also, I didn't say it, but I absolutely love the camera movement already in this film. Good morning, Mr. Matichek. Yeah, good morning. Who put this 3250 suitcase in the window? I did, Mr. Matichek. I guess it's all right. Thank you, Mr. Matichek. I thought he was gonna fire him right then and there. Oh my goodness, that was scary. A letter from a girl. My heart was trembling as I walked into the post office, and there you were lying in box 237. I took you out of your envelope and read you. Read you right there. Wow. Whoa, that's a little, that's a little racy. Definitely romantic. How long has it been going on? Well, we've exchanged four letters. And she's no ordinary girl, is it? Are you tall? Are you short? What does it matter so long as our minds meet? How, like, romantic would it be to get a love letter in the mail? Like, that is so romantic. I don't know. Could just be me. But I mean, like, it just feels so old school. And I love it. <laughs> what do you think of this? Twenty times a day he has to listen to Ochichonia. It's a perfectly terrible idea. Oh, it's a cigarette box. That's why. I feel like actually that would get a little annoying. I thought it was like a jewelry box or something. 
Yeah. Miklosh Brothers on the telephone in reference to the cigarette box. Oh, can I call you back in about five minutes? I'm not quite sure about the whole idea. You can't expect me to make up my mind in five minutes. Case and I'll have to say no. Uh, sorry. And that is the way of the game, baby. Negotiations and business. That's it. Uh, I really didn't come in to buy a bag. Oh, I beg your pardon. Well, what can I show you? I wonder if I could see Mr. Matichek. Oh, I'm looking for a job. a job. Oh, I love her dress. I love how people used to dress in the 40s. Like, they just dress like they had places to go, you know? Yeah. Well, I, I'd like to, but there's no opening. But you just told me you need some extra people because of the rush. How much is that belt in the window? The one that says 295. 295. Oh, no. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> you literally saw the price. She's like, uh-uh, that's too much. <laughs> Look, if it was up to me, I'd put you to work right away, but I'm not the boss. Well, why don't you let me see him? I know Mr. Matichek inside out. You know me inside out? <laughs> Here, please, uh, sit down. He's like, you better not talk for me, bro. <laughs> I feel like he's going to say yes to everything except for giving her a job. Uh, I'm looking for a job. Oh, no, no, that's impossible. It's, it's out of the question. I don't know what to tell you. Maybe after inventory. Please, may I leave my address? Oh, yes, yes. I love that he's still charming, even though he's saying, like, no, I'm sorry. He's still super charming about it. Oh, my God. That was a nice party last night, huh? And Mrs. Matichek thinks a lot of you. <laughs> and, you know, I think a lot of Mrs. Matichek. <laughs> I mean, at least he's in his good graces, right? At least he's not, like, at odds with him. How much are you selling it for? Uh, four twenty-five. Yeah, four twenty-five. That's a bargain. That's a real bargain. Uh, She's like bargain. Did somebody say bargain? <laughs> now is that four dollars and twenty-five cents or four hundred and twenty-five dollars? I think it's four dollars and twenty-five cents. Candy box, isn't it? Well, yes, madame. That's Ochichornia. It's a very popular classic. Can you imagine? Every time you take a piece of candy, you have to listen to that song. Oh, I don't get the reference to the song. It must be like a mournful song, then. Have you any idea how many pieces of candy you eat a day? This little box makes you candy conscious. Tinkling little song is a message to you. Too much candy. Now be careful. She is selling this box because it gets in your mind and you don't want to hear... They need to hire her, okay? How much is it? Five fifty. Reduced from six ninety five. It's a real bargain. I'll take it. Thank you, madam. She he's, he's like five fifty. That was fantastic. What a sale. What a sale indeed. Well, I got a big dinner date tonight. With the boss? Oh no, he never invites me anymore. It's certainly very difficult to get along with him these days. Well, I hope he's feeling more cheerful today. He looks so good in a frickin' fedora and a coat. Oh my god. James frickin' Stewart, ladies and gentlemen. Yes, Mr. Kralik? Uh, I noticed that you wore a yellow blouse with light green dots yesterday. No, it was a green blouse with light yellow dots. So please leave my blouse alone. It's none of your business. She's like, don't butt into my, my business. Oh, he's like one of those, like, uh, goody two-shoes workers, you know? For heaven's sake, I don't care what you wear. If you want to look like a pony in the circus, it's all right. Listen, I sold as much goods yesterday as anybody else in the shop. Did you tell that to Mr. Matichek? Yes, I did. And what did he say? He said, tell her not to come in that blouse anymore. Oh, the tension. I think he's, I think he's um, threatened by her because she's a really good salesperson. You know that girl I was corresponding with? She is the most wonderful girl in the world. Is she pretty? Haven't met her yet. I'm scared. Chance she might be disappointed. This is literally like online dating before online dating. <laughs> what a movie before it's time, I swear. Ever get a bonus? You wonder how much is in it, you don't want to open it. As long as the envelope's closed, you're a millionaire. Poor you keep postponing that moment and can't postpone it forever. What a fantastic analogy. But then you'll never know, you know, what you really have. Because you could really be a billionaire thinking you're a millionaire, right? Never know. I'm meeting her tonight, 8.30 in a cafe. Haven't slept for days. I'm sure she'll be beautiful. Just a lovely average girl. That's all I want. Oh my god, I would have fallen in love with him. I mean, he's got it all. The looks, the talent. I swear, what a man. This window looks terrible. That isn't a shop on the street that doesn't look better than this. It's a wonder we get any customers. Well, we'll stay tonight after closing hours and redecorate. Oh, they have him, they have them, he has them working overtime. I just realized that that's the guy from um, The Wizard of Oz. Uh, he plays like the wizard. He plays like, a bunch of different characters. Yeah, hello, darling. Thousand penguin. But Emma, I don't understand it. I, only last Monday I gave you... Yeah, but all right. All right. I'll send it over as soon as possible. 
Oh, I feel like he's a loving husband. I just got the sense. Or at least he's, he's a gentle soul, at least. What is it? Mr. Matacek, I'd like to talk to you for a moment. Well, is it important to Matacek and company? Not exactly, sir. Well, then I'm sorry. I'm busy. You'll have to see me later. He's going to miss his appointment. His date. His hot date. <laughs> With a woman he doesn't know. Well, sir, for several days your attitude toward me seems to have changed. I really, I'm completely at a loss to understand it. I, after all, I do my work. Yeah, well, everything seems to be all right then, doesn't it? He's not going to challenge that because he wants to, like, you know, be the good, upstanding employee. I wondered if something was going on between him and his wife. I think you're a gentleman. When you say, Miss Novak, let's go into the stockroom and put some bags on the shelf. Well, you really want to put some bags on the shelf. Well, I just don't believe in mixing bags with pleasure. I love her personality in this. Like, she's very warm and bubbly. I think Margaret Sullivan is playing this character so well as well. Quite a change in you, Miss Nova. Uh, you know, I was planning to wear that awful blouse tonight. I have a date with tonight. her. Do you think you could spare me tonight? And then maybe Mr. Matacek would let me off. He's like, no? Was she playing the whole time? Oh, man. You think you could spare me tonight? Can you get along without Miss Novak tonight? Oh, you want to go too? What is this? Does everybody want to leave here? Miss Novotny and I can manage the novelty window by ourselves. Who shop is this? What, what I don't understand is that uh, Mr. Monacek literally said yes to her, but got all mad when he wanted to leave too. What is that about? That's all right. I think we can manage without you. Mr. Monacek, I think you're being unjust. I'm being unjust. Six ladies and gentlemen who stand around here for days telling employees. jokes and talking about the movies. I feel like we need to give this man a vacation. I just... Just what, like just a week, you know? Because I feel like he has some tension that he needs to work out. <laughs> Mr. Matacek, you spoke like this to me yesterday. What did I do yesterday? The whole week you've treated me like this, and without any reason. Maybe I have more reason than you think. Oh, I think he thinks that there's something going on between him and his wife, the his worker and his wife. That's probably why he's treating him like that. Uh, just put a thousand pengo in an envelope and have Pepe take it over to Mrs. Matacek right away. Well, Mr. Kralik and I always have lunch at Fargo's. We can deliver it. Isn't that right, Mr. Kralik? He's like, no, I don't want... I don't want Mr. Kralik to deliver it. Mr. Vardash. Mr. Matacek. I, uh, I don't like to break in on your lunch hour. That's perfectly all right. It'll be a pleasure. So that's probably why he was treating him like that. I answered my... The movie answered my own question. What? He's gonna let him go. I've been thinking all day about what you said this morning. Oh, I'm very sorry, Mr. Monitor. I really believe that you'd be happier somewhere else. Oh, my God. He actually is letting him go. What? Didn't they say that he was the oldest employee? Oh, my God. I still can't believe it. There's no reason. I'm not going. She's expecting to meet a pretty important man. Well, I'm in no mood to act important tonight. I was 100% not expecting him to be laid off. And also bold. Like, how, how why would he do, I, I don't even understand it. How soon can you come over here? Come right away, I'll, I'll be waiting here. Oh, you may all go home, we'll finish the windows tomorrow. He's like, I'm out. I'm like, don't, you ain't gonna catch me there for him to change his mind and be like, actually, I need you to stay, no, 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 no. You said I could leave early, I'm already gone. <laughs> He's the best man you had, Mr. Matuchek. Why did you let him go? Because he's jealous I of him. I warned you, Mr. Perovich. His whole life he lived in this shop. Mind your own business and go home. Bro, your wife is not cheating on you with Alfred. Krolik? Is his last name Krolik? Come on. Today I had a chance to get a glimpse of your new dining room set. Oh, it's exquisite, really. Good night, Mr. Matuchek. Good night, Bob. I love the lighting in this scene. It's like being cast down from the ceiling. So we have a nice shadowy effect on this part of his face. It's true. I'm afraid so, Mr. Monacek. What's true? Report on Mrs. Emma Monacek. It was one of your employees. Both our operatives identified him later as Mr. Vodish. Woo! Vodish, baby. Not Mr. Krolik. You let go of the wrong one. 22 years we've been married. 22 years I was proud of my wife. Well, she just didn't want to grow old with me. Can we, for a second, appreciate Frank Morgan in this moment? He, wow, is really letting the audience see his emotions and how it is affecting him. We are in the presence of a freaking master. Hello? No, Peppy isn't back yet. He forgot to pick up a bottle of perfume at Chabot's. Yes, I'll give a good scolding to the little rascal. 
Have a good time, Mrs. Matichek. Love how they had to give us some comedic relief right there after feeling some very real emotions <laughs> to give a little bit of comedic relief. Mr. Matichek! Whoa, I was not expecting that. Um, can we just debrief? I'm sorry. What? That is insane. What? What is this film? What have you recommended to me? I really think you should go in and keep your date. Now, Pirovich, just do me a favor and deliver my note. What's the name of that book? Anna Karenina by Tolstoy. Anna Karenina. Anna Karenina. Anna Karenina. Fantastic story, by the way. Did they do an original... A classic Anna Karenina. Would love to watch that one. See anything? Not yet, sir. Well, can you see her? Well, if you don't like Miss Novak, I can tell you right now you won't like that girl. Why? Because it is Miss Novak. Oh my god, so Miss Novak was the woman that he was gonna meet. Don't break her heart. Oh, he's going in? Oh, hello, Miss Novak. Do you mind if I sit down? Yes, I do. You know, I have an appointment too, Mr. Crowley. Oh, you're friend seems to be a little late. Oh, he's not going to reveal to her that he's he's her her lover. I didn't know you cared for high literature. There are many things you don't know about me, Mr. Krolik. There are many things you don't know about me, Miss Novak. There might be a lot we don't know about each other. Oh, love that close in. Honestly, that shirt is actually kind of terrible. But in a way, it also works. It's very strange. Well, I really wouldn't care to scratch your surface, Mr. Crowley, because I know exactly what I'd find. Well, Thank now, don't you, misunderstand me, Miss Novak. I'm only trying to pay you a compliment. Mr. Mr. Crowley! Don't touch the book, Mr. Crowley. Why doesn't he just tell her? I mean, I understand, because, you know, it's been a rough day. I get it. Are you deliberately trying to spoil my evening? Why do you hate me so? I don't hate you. Oh, I suppose you love me. Oh, why should I? What have you done to make me love you? Well, I don't want you to love me. Oh, I don't. I don't. Jeez. I love that they fight. They're like an old married couple already. You're cold and snippy like an old maid, and you're going to have a tough time getting a man to fall in love with you. You calling me an old maid? You, you little insignificant clerk. Wow, that was low. I mean, I feel like that just reaffirmed his feelings about not being adequate enough to meet the woman that he's been talking to. Goodbye, Miss Novak. Goodbye, Mr. Krolik. She, you, she has to feel bad about that. There's no way that she's just going to let that, like, fester. Well, how is he? I want to thank you for your splendid reaction to my telephone call. I knew you wouldn't fail us. Now, this whole thing must be kept in strictest confidence. What I told you over the telephone is between the three of us. Me, Mr. Matichek, and you. Here. Mr. Matichek is going to feel like a total douchebag now. Because he 100% only fired him because of his jealousy. Care to work for me again? Uh, after all. No, uh, don't even think about it. I hated you. I... That's how far jealousy can drive a man. Someone in the comments said that Ernest Lubitsch was actually Billy Wilder's mentor. I can totally see the similarities. I see you, Ernest Lubitsch. We got to explore some more of his films. When I first got that anonymous letter, I laughed. I, my wife having secret rendezvous with one of my employees. Love that they will not use the word affair or infidelity or unfaithfulness. You were the only one of my employees who had been to my home. And you sent my wife flowers. Oh, but that, that was oh, all you had. don't have to tell me. He's just a kind man who loves his job and loves his boss. Or respects his boss, I should say. Here are the keys to matter check and company. What shall I do about Mr. Vardash? Well, I, I want him dismissed as quietly as possible, no. And we need to give major kudos to freaking Frank Morgan, y'all. The man can act. You saved my life. Don't mention it. It was a pleasure. You'd like to be a clerk, huh? This isn't just an ordinary breakdown. All right, you're a clerk. Go on, now. Get out of here. Thanks, Mr. Matichek. I love how everyone's getting a little promotion uh, during the holidays, yes. Hello, Mrs. Matichek. Oh, you want to speak to Mr. Matichek? You wouldn't like to speak by any chance to Mr. Vardish? <laughs> Dang. The scandal. Okay, stir in the pot, I see you, Bobo. Oh, you're calling for Miss Novak. Well, what's the matter with her? Well, I hope it's nothing serious. Anyone didn't agree with you around here, certainly was nobody else but Miss Novak. We just leave Miss Novak out of this. Oh, I love how he's defending her now, now that he knows that she's, uh, she's his woman, you know? Oh, I love it. You're fired. What right have you got to fire me anyway? Does Mr. Matrochek know about this? No. 
What do you think of that? Prove it to me in black and white. I'm gonna get it in black and blue. What a fire line. Absolutely fantastic scene. Love how he stood up to him. Oh, yes. Love that, uh, that's not quite zoom in, but, uh, close up? Don't know what you would call it. Oh, she's waiting for a, for a letter from him. Congratulate you. I hear you haven't been feeling well. I wanted to see Mr. Matichek. I've been trying to tell you that Mr. Matichek isn't here and I'm the manager. He's like, I'm, I'm the manager of this... The shop now. Oh, well, now, uh, please, Mr. Fellers, I, I don't own the shop yet. I'm only the manager, you know. She's like, oh, so, yes. oh, wow. <laughs> oh, goodbye. Oh, no. Poor thing. Wow, this not getting any letters must really have affected her. I wonder what else is going on. I can't help admiring the exquisite way you have of expressing yourself. Aunt Donna has something for you. No, go right ahead and read the letter. Don't, don't worry about me. Oh, it's the letter she's been waiting for. This is the perfect time to tell her that it's you. This gentleman did come to the cafe. He misunderstood. Who is this very attractive young man? He's just the type women fall for. Very attractive young man. I love that she's totally talking about the same man. It won't hurt him to be a little jealous. He doesn't seem to be much of a man. Where you would say black, he would say white. Where you would say ugly, he says beautiful. I thought that it was going to be more of like a, a central romance story, but I kind of like that it is, there's a lot more themes at play in this film, and I'm really liking it so far. Folks, I have great news for you. I just talked to the hospital, and Mr. Matuszek is much better. Oh. The biggest Christmas present we could give him tonight is an empty, bare-looking shop with nothing in it except money in the cash. <laughs> <laughs> Love it. Love the pep talk before the sales. I feel like working on Christmas is already hard enough. <laughs> right from here. It's like money, sales. We're making that money. God bless all of you out there who work retail during the holidays. You are a bunch of fantastic people and you're doing the Lord's work. Uh, pardon me, ladies. I, I can't see very well without my glasses. Could you tell me the price on that briefcase? Well, if you don't know, Mr. Maruchek, who should? Those look like feathers, actually. I hope that's not like Wizard, with the Wizard of Oz with like the asbestos that they were sprinkling on the poor actors. Oh, jeez. I want to thank you from the bottom of my heart. You, Kralik, and you, Pirovich, you're the best doctors. <laughs> this is my home. It's your baby. I mean, your name's on it. I love that they're like a little work family. That's so sweet. Have you ever been to Biro's? How about joining me and we'll break a bottle of champagne together? You, you, you have another engagement, huh? What, what? I just wanted to be sure that you weren't alone. <laughs> I mean, what a character arc, man. I, I, I think he's my favorite character and actor of this film. Oh. oh, I'm sorry to keep you waiting. I'll be out in just a second. Oh, that's all right. I don't know her. Want to see something? Oh. oh, that's beautiful. I like to see what it looks like on a girl. <laughs> He's like on my girl. <laughs> I love this. Look at the way he looks at her, guys. Look at his eyes on her. That is so romantic. Mind if I tell you something? No, no, no. I found myself falling for you. There were moments in the stockroom when you could have swept me off my feet. 100% shout out to Samson Raphaelson. I know that he was the man who wrote the screenplay for this. I know for a fact you're not alive anymore, but wherever you are, shout out to you. So now you better see your girlfriend. By the way, is it serious? Yes, very. Maybe we'll both be engaged Monday morning. I think we will. I think we will. I don't know what is going through his head. But whatever it is that he has just allowed himself to believe in that moment is so 100% believable. I don't know what goes on in his head, but it's magic. That's all I can say. He came to see me. Who? Your fiance. Yes, what? yes, he came last night. You shouldn't have told him who I am. Apparently he didn't believe it when you wrote him that I meant nothing to you. I kind of like how they're sort of, he's kind of like letting it play out that, you know, they're, they're not revealing to her that he's her lover. In a little while you'll be Mrs. Popkin. Um, Mrs. Pop Popkin? That's the name he gave me. I think he's a very attractive man, don't you? Personally, I think that little stomach of his <laughs> gives him a nice homey quality. She still doesn't know what he looks like. She's like, dang it. Oh, poor thing. 
Now, if I were a girl and had to choose between a young good-for-nothing with plenty of hair and a good, solid, mature citizen, I'd pick Matthias Popkin every time. <laughs> Matthias Popkin. Except for none of this is true, and you're literally talking to the love of your life. To love is to be two and yet one. That's Victor Hugo. He stole that. Thought I was an inspiration for all those beautiful thoughts. He's going to be like, oh, well, I guess you're just going to have to marry me instead. That's what I feel is going to happen. I'm sorry you feel this way about it. I hate to think I'm spoiling your Christmas. I built up such an illusion about him. I thought he was so perfect. Yes, make her fall out of love with her idea of you and make her fall in love with you. That is the way you do it. Clara, darling. Oh, no, you must Oh, dearest sweetheart, take your key and open post office box 237 and take me out of my envelope and oh, kiss no. me. Mr. Crowley, you must... It's like... <gasps> Wow, what a beautiful way to reveal it to her. Are you disappointed? I don't feel bad at all. Oh, Clara. Oh, I was pretty rude, wasn't oh, I? Oh, no, no. Yes, I was. Why am I getting, like, Jim and Pam vibes from The Office? Like, two people who work together, who we all wanted to get together for, like, freaking four seasons, mind you. And they finally get together, and it's so, like... So satisfying. I called you bow-legged. I was going to prove to you that I wasn't. I was going out in the street and pull up my trousers. Yes. Would you mind very much if I asked you to pull them up now? <laughs> oh, my God. Oh, my God. How cute was that ending? Oh, my God. What an interesting Christmas story. I felt like... I was expecting it to be a lot more like romantic and like um, super Christmassy and it was better than what I was expecting. Definitely. I loved that this film was playing with kind of darker themes. The fact that they were able to take it that far without actually explicitly saying that she was, you know, cheating on him. But yeah, it was very like Billy Wilder-esque. I really liked that. The character of the film, the actor of the film that just took it home for me was Frank Morgan. He really showed so many different aspects of his character, you know, like jealousy and pain and like repentance. It He really showed a lot of different themes in his character and every single step of the way you felt it with him because he was allowing you to see his emotions through his facial features, through his nonverbals. Wow, he really... He, sh he took home the Oscar for that for me. Like, he was fantastic in this film. Yeah, overall, I loved this. I think I would give this one... I think I would give it, like, a 9.5 out of 10. I think it was really good. Thank you guys so much for watching it with me. And a very Merry Christmas to all of you. All right, everyone, that does it for this video. As always, if you liked as much as I did, please give it a thumbs up. Also, please subscribe to the channel and hit that bell notification to stay in the loop. If you would like to see this film's full reaction, it is up on Patreon, available exclusively to our Golden Oscar patrons. And in the next video, we are going to be celebrating New Year's with the film Auntie Mame. I am so excited to watch this. I've heard such great things about it and I cannot wait. As always, for those of you who have not seen Auntie Mame, I suggest that you either check it up online or just watch it in its entirety, then come back with all of your movie facts and your movie insights and we are going to talk about it in the comment box below i am so excited guys if you have any recommendations of any classic hollywood films go ahead and let me know in the recommendation form as always this is so much fun to do with you guys guys merry christmas happy holidays i hope you have so much fun with your families your friends your loved ones thank you guys so much for watching please stay safe and healthy out there and i will see all of you in the next video bye everybody Let's get this freaking show on the road, shall we? Okay. Laszlo. Laszlo. I'm just gonna say Laszlo. Because I swear if I say it wrong, y'all gonna come for me in the comment section. Now, Lubitsch approached different studios to create this... <laughs> I messed up. Instead, he was looking at a European actress... Actress? <laughs>
cheese and crackers. And to the end, maestro. All right, everyone, y'all know the deal if you haven't already. <laughs> Screw it. Seriously, guys, Merry Christmas, Happy Holidays. You guys rock. And I wanted to let you guys know that. I love you. Bye.